Okay, I uh, want to do a video on the Thin Twin um, Whirlpool that I've rebuilt. Um, so basically went through, I paid 50 bucks for this uh, Whirlpool uh, Thin Twin. Needed new shocks, so I put new shocks on it. Uh, put a new clutch in it. And that came as a kit, the clutch kit. And uh, I want to go over some pointers. Um, put new felt in the back uh, for the rear drum. Uh, glued that on. There's felt in the front here. That one was good. Um, the only thing really supporting this are these two uh, wheels which have been replaced. Um, if you see that one back up in there, right? The problem I was having, I couldn't figure it out, but the belt kept slipping on the spindle. So uh, I got creative. So what I did is I went and um, I went and got another pulley for the spindle. So if you look there, there's actually I'm running. I welded them together. I get this focus to work properly. Bear with me. There we go. So I'm actually running two belts. So on that inner uh, spindle pulley is what I'm going to call it. I uh, drilled it out to fit over the shaft and then uh, on the outer one uh, that's the one that came with the machine uh, the other one I got a parts place a used parts place but I had to drill it out to fit over the uh, shaft okay so it, the inner one is not threaded it just sits over the shaft fairly tight they're welded together I'm running two belts so you can take a look here I'm running two belts on this system and I can see if I can get the phone in here so you can see. See? So that solved my problem. Um, so hopefully uh, this won't give me any issues. Um, so if anybody's thinking about uh, wanting to get a little more grip out of your belt system in your uh, Whirlpool or any of your standard dryers that run these chintzy little, I mean these really fancy belts. <laughs> Um, I would do this, okay? So the way it's set up, I've just welded two nuts together. The inner one's drilled out to fit over the shaft of the motor. The outer one is threaded in. Um, and I've got them spaced properly for the distance between the uh, idler pulley so they fit inside there properly. And then they sit on the drum and see how they go. So that solved that problem. I was thinking about taking some... Uh, <laughs> I was gonna make a mount here because there's a piece of metal up inside here that's pretty sturdy. I was gonna use a, uh, I was actually gonna mount it thinks, right in here. Um, some roller skate wheels or inline wheels, but flat, so more like roller skate wheels and then make a, a, a frame for a pair of them to sit on here and that they would cradle the bottom of the, the tub, the dryer tub. But you know, if this holds up and this works, I won't do that. If, if this doesn't, then I will. <laughs> I'll make a Y-framed support that's adjustable with two um, roller skate wheels that'll sit and support this drum. Uh, I just uh, don't want to give up on this thing. I've had one in the past, uh, and these are really good machines. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show you was the, de the detail on these spring releases. This is a kind of a pain in the butt. So how this face plate is held in is you've got these these clips here and if you happen to get these get pulled out of here see it's just this reinforced metal clip see it and it just sits behind this piece of metal here okay so what happens is there's a spring here and you pull down on it and that push, pulls this down and you see that little notch in that uh, strengthened metal clip hardened metal clip that locks into here so the way this goes when this comes up you pull on that spring from underneath here you see that little um, looks like the end of a nut you pull that down that presses or depresses the spring here right here, which lowers this, which 
allows that, see that move? That allows that to engage there. You know, you push it in. So that's how they work. Mine, mine had popped off and I couldn't figure out how to get this was hanging out and I couldn't figure out how to do it for about an hour and a half. I was going nuts. Finally, I got it figured out, but that's how these work. So uh, one other thing I want to show people since I'm at it is I reinforced this thing. Wasn't too happy um, when I was working on the, you know, tore this all apart, took the drum out, cleaned it, uh, replaced the shocks. My top ring here was busted. So I flipped this ring upside down, used epoxy to glue it. I completely separated it because it was busted on this right side. The top piece, this piece was separated from the bottom. So I took it off. It's supposed to be welded together, plastic welded together. But anyway, I separated it, flipped it upside down, uh, buffed it out on the inside with a wire steel brush, um, used epoxy to seal it back up. And then I siliconed it on the outside. So what happens, is up underneath here right up underneath the whole perimeter of the unit except for the where the water comes out um, and that's right over here on the outside I silicone the top cap of this assembly to the bottom after I epoxied it but you have to use a thin layer of epoxy because there's a water channel in here that the water goes through inside this plastic thing um, but I didn't like how this was. This this wasn't reinforced very well, so I used the inch and eighth angle iron, and it's notched out all the way to the back. It's notched around that piece of metal brace there, and then screwed in, and then screwed in the front here. See? So basically, this thing made a huge difference in how much this shakes when it's running, and it also. Um, made the basket not jump around so much because I remember my old one was the same thing as this one the basket moved more this one doesn't which is really neat so that was one of the things I did uh, screws from the side going into that inch and an eighth three of them with uh, lock nuts and then from the top going down so to secure that metal angle iron on each side and this sucker's sturdy I mean this is pretty flimsy because when you take this cover off you know there isn't much supporting this at all in the front you know so anyway uh, basically tur turning into a Franken pool <laughs> a Frankenstein whirlpool but uh, I've got what I want you know I've got it done so we got a second washer in here um, let me try and show you while I'm at it I'm gonna try and show you if I can hold the phone and show you how to do this. Cut this face plate, okay, so bear with me. So you're gonna close up this face plate. I'm trying to line it up here, okay. And you kinda gotta jog it back and forth to get it to line up. There we go. Now I'm gonna set the phone down and you, you watch. Okay, so I'm gonna set this here and hopefully you can see. So you grab this thing. You grab it, you pull down on it, and you shove in on the top and let it go. Same thing over here. This one's a little tough. Tougher to get for some reason. Okay, so here we go. So we grab that, push in, and make sure you're in. And then to release, you just grab these and pull them down and then the it, it folds down and it's kind of on a, a lip which you can take the take the assembly off the lip so hopefully that caught on video you can see but uh, getting there um, getting there with a the laundry center uh, and there it is so all right hopefully that helps some people out if they're having problems with the uh, whirlpool or they want to do some reinforcements let's show this thing running so I'll show you And I do believe this thing's pretty old. I mean, this has got to be from the 70s, if, if not late 70s, early 80s, maybe, I'm guessing. Um, but good unit. I mean, it's seen better days, but, you know, I've rebuilt her. And you can tell the drum's got a little bit of a 
bend to it. Someone probably pulled the drum out and squished it a little bit. I tried to straighten it out as best I could, but it's okay. It's, it'll do its job. So there it is. Double belted. Double belted. Whirlpool. Frankenpool. Stack washer and dryer. All right, over and out.